what we said is a nucleotide is made up of a sugar. What we want to start with is to make RNA. A sugar, because we are making RNA, we know now that what we should attach on carbon number two is actually OH. Because we want to make RNA. And then we can use any base here other than thiamine. So if you want, you can even use uracil, because uracil is used in RNA. And then we have OH, H, H, C, H, 2, O. And what have we attached here? A phosphate. That is the structure of a nucleotide. Take note of the things I have changed. What are those things? Number one, I have made a nucleotide. I want to make RNA. But I've ensured that I've even used uh, uracil because in the introduction we said uracil is only used in RNA. If this was DNA, I was going to remove uracil there and replace with thiamine. Okay. Number two, on carbon number two, I have attached OH where there was R because what we are interested in for RNA is a ribose sugar. And for a ribose sugar on carbon number two, there is OH. So beneath this one, below this one, I'm going to draw another nucleotide. If I want, I put a different base, maybe adenine. And because we are still doing RNA or H. And this is the structure. And here, what is attached? A phosphate. So now, what happens is, this hydrogen is removed, and this phosphate bonds, reacts there to carbon number three. Now, when I show like this, you get confused. You fail to understand how is the reaction occurring. Remember, if I'm to draw the phosphate in full, it will be phosphoric acid. It's going to have phosphate, double bondage to that, single bondage to OH, OH, OH. But remember, these, they become deprotonated, so it will be O negative. Then here there was OH. So to show you the reaction, it simply means donates OH and gets H from there. That's what is happening here. That's the reaction. And when that happens, water is liberated, just as usual. And when water is liberated, we shall remove that water there, meaning the phosphate will just bond directly like that. That is why I'm trying to show it like this to you so that you understand. I'm, go I'm just trying to say there is a KO and that phosphate bonds to that KO. And the name of this bond linking one nucleotide to another, this bond is called a phosphodiester bond. So remember, in the synthesis of nucleic acids, phosphodiester bonds link successive nucleotides. If you want, you can continue. You can add another sugar if you want. If you want this time around, do what? Use a different one, cytosine. And remember, OH, OH, H, 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 CH2O. Again, a phosphate joins to another sugar. So you should remember that whenever you are adding a nucleotide to another to form a polynucleotide, a long chain, we always add it on carbon number three, on that OH there. So we always add on carbon number three. That's why the end here is called a three prime end, because that's where we add three prime. Then the beginning there, here, we begin with a phosphate on carbon number five. So we call it a five prime end. What is the conclusion? When you get one nucleotide, link it to another and another until you have a long chain of nucleotides linked by this bond, which is also here, this bond, and we are calling it a phosphodiester bond. And you ensure that as you do that, 
You don't put a, any thiamine on the bases. You can use any other base other than thiamine. And on carbon number two, you ensure that there is OH attached, meaning you are using a ribose sugar. When you do that, that structure you've manufactured is what we call ribonucleic acid. So this is the structure of RNA. So now that you know that for RNA, it doesn't use thiamine. That's number one. Number two, it's a single strand. What does it mean? It's just a single chain. And number three, that it uses a ribose sugar. How can you transform this RNA into DNA? How does it differ from synthesis of DNA? So I want you to follow me nicely. I'm going to remove RNA there. And I will replace it with now what I want to show you, DNA. And the name of the sugar will now change. Instead of you using a ribose sugar, it will be a deoxy ribose sugar. Instead of it being a single strand, it will now be a double strand structure. Instead of it not using, uh, it does not using thiamine, it doesn't use uracil. So if I asked you what are the differences between RNA and DNA, you can use some of those points. When making DNA, we use uracil. We use, we use thiamine, but we don't use uracil. Again, when making DNA, it's a double-stranded structure, while RNA is single-stranded. When making DNA, we use deoxyribose sugar. What does it mean? It means on carbon number two, you don't put OH, but you put H. Let me transform this structure into DNA so that you see what is happening. Number one, doesn't use uracil. So let us check on the bases we used to make RNA. Is there any uracil? Yes. Where is the uracil? It's on the first nucleotide there. We are going to replace it with it. the base that we use in DNA, which is thiamine. So we have done the first part. Double strand? Not yet. We'll go there later. What about deoxyribose sugar? What you are seeing here is a ribose sugar that we use to make RNA. Why is it a ribose sugar? Because on carbon number two there is OH, OH, OH. So what we do is we shall remove OH and put H. Remove OH and put H everywhere. When we do that, now we have a deoxyribose sugar. But the bond is the same. Everything. And even 5 prime, 3 prime is the same. Now the difference is we need to make it double-stranded. How do we make it double-stranded? DNA is made double-stranded by drawing this, the, an opposite of this, a complementary of this, facing different direction. What does it mean? A sugar complementary to this will be drawn here, and it's going to face downward. Again, a sugar complementary to this will be drawn and it will face downward. Again, a sugar complementary to the last one will be drawn and it will face downward. That is the first step. When you face them downward, it means that instead of you having three, five prime, three prime, it will be the opposite. What will start here is three prime, and then what will end there is five prime. Let us complete the structures. You see, it's facing downward. We know that what should be here is what is like there. What is here is, we have a situation where we now have H, and then what we have here is 
CH2O. But what is starting is okay, let's do this. Many students face problems eh, trying to rotate this so that it faces downward. But the secret is this. You should always be looking at eh, the sugar you are referring to. So the sugar you are referring to is this. When it rotates and faces downward, it means that eh, this part is this part. Where we are attaching a phosphate. And this part is this part. So if we do this, it means this part, this, should be here, meaning a phosphate will come there with CH2O. The same applies here. A phosphate will come there with CH2O, just like there. CH2O with a phosphate, even here the phosphate will come there with CH2O. That's what it means. What else? We rotated. The phosphate went there. So meaning that this one, which is demonstrating whether it's deoxyribose or ribose, this hydrogen, this one, this one, it should face inside. So it will be here. We are saying H, H. But initially, what do we have here? We have OH, H. We have OH, H. We have OH, H. So this is how you make this strand. You draw the opposite one facing downward. When you do that, you have positioned this next to this. So a reaction will occur, just like previously. Even a phosphate will bond to this. Remember, a phosphate was always reacting on carbon number three. So if this is three, this is four, and we know that C is five, so this is two, this is one. So even here, we know that this is three, this is four, this is two, this is one. Even here, we know that this is uh, four, this is three, this is two, this is one. And what is on number one? On number one, what is attached is a base. Even here on number one, what is attached is a base. On number one, what is attached is a base. But how do you know which base to attach on number one for this other strand we are drawing? There are rules that are used to make DNA. And the rules are of base pairing are that adenine bonds with thiamine in two hydrogen bonds, cytosine bonds with guanine in three hydrogen bonds. That is the rule of base pairing. So using this rule of base pairing, since here there is T, automatically we know that what should come here is A. With how many bonds? Two. So this now has joined to this to make one structure. Since there is A here, what should come is T? two hydrogen bonds, so this has joined to make one structure. Since there is C there, what should come is three hydrogen bonds and what should come there is guanine. As a result, we have made a double-stranded structure and that's what makes DNA to differ from RNA. And from this you can tell that RNA is not stable as compared to DNA. Why? Something that is double-stranded is stronger than something that is single-stranded. So that is the rule of base pairing. Now, having looked at RNA and DNA, for DNA, I want to explain something before I finish. So what should you know about DNA? It's actually helical structure. It is kind of twisted. Or it is coiled. I know the drawing I've shown you here is just showing something straight. And when you go to the books, books just do this. 5 prime, 3 prime, 3 prime, 5 prime, and put lines there. And they will show you that that is DNA. Some books, they will just write lines like this and do like this. DNA. But they don't show you the details. 
what you should remember is that this single line you are seeing here that they draw in books is just this chain of phosphate, phosphate, sugar, phosphate, sugar, phosphate, sugar. That is the single line. The other single line also, phosphate, phosphate, sugar, phosphate, sugar, phosphate, sugar. Then the lines you see at the middle represents the bonds between the bases. That is what they show in books. Now, when you, when you use a process that is called X-ray crystallography, this procedure helps you to see the 3D structure of this DNA. And the 3D structure of this DNA was first postulated by Watson and Crick the two scientists, some time back. They, are, they postulated that although we are seeing the structure like this, it doesn't look like this. It actually looks like this. One strand will have five prime quite all right, but it is coiled like that, up to three prime. To draw the other strand, it also coils like this on the other one. Until it has five prime. Then what do we do? The bases are now here at the mid bonding to each other like that. That is the structure of DNA. I know you are thinking because there is this linking, linkage, the two are touching. They are not touching at all. It's like I show you like this. If you are able to see me like this, you will think this, my, my arm here is touching with the other one, but they are not. If I do the rotate, you'll see that there is a space in between. That's what happens here. The DNA always maintains the same diameter. And the diameter is always 2.0 angstroms.